Hello, my friends. This is Laura Adams, and you are listening to the Money Girl Podcast, where my mission is to help you live rich and love the journey. If you are ready for more knowledge, resources, and motivation to manage your money the best way possible, you are in the right place. I want to say thank you for all the awesome five-star reviews that you've submitted in iTunes and Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called these days. Please keep them coming. If you enjoy the show, that is definitely the best way to let me know and to let everyone at the QDT network who works on the show know. And if you're a new listener, I am thrilled and overjoyed that you're here. I hope you'll stick around by subscribing. You will find the notes for each show and the full archive of podcasts in the Money Girls section at quickanddirtytips.com. This is episode number 617, so there are literally over 600 shows in the archives for you. Today's show is for everyone who has a lot going on at year end, and that's most of us. It can be such a busy time of year. We've got holiday planning, travel celebrations, And there's also a lot to remember about managing your money wisely. December 31 is a pretty important date because not only does it mark the end of the tax year, which is critical for your personal finances, it gives you some last-minute opportunities to save money. So there are a few things that you can do between now and the end of the year that will help you. And by the way, if you're listening to this podcast in the future and you're saying, well, it's, you know, it's not December, Laura, these are things that you can do most any year. So just make sure that you accomplish them before the end of the year to take advantage of them. So before you toast the new year, I want you to use this show like a checklist, a year-end checklist to improve your finances while there's still time. As I mentioned, this is episode number 617 called A Seven-Point Money Checklist for Year-End Success. All right, let's get to the tips for improving your personal finances before the year ends. Number one, max out a workplace retirement account. This will probably come as no surprise to you if you've been listening to the show for any length of time. You have heard me talk about retirement accounts and how much I love them. So if you got a retirement plan at work, it could be a 401k, a 403b, there are even 457 plans or government plans called thrift savings plans, whatever you've got. I want you to review how much you have contributed for the year. In some cases, we can really lose track of how much we've put in. So remember that for 2019, you can contribute up to $19,000, or you can go up to $25,000 if you're age 50 or older. So you can max out your retirement account at work or get as close as possible to it before December 31st. So you don't have a whole lot of time left. You're going to need to adjust your final contributions in order to max it out before the end of the year. And I highly recommend doing that if you can afford it. Remember that every pre-tax dollar that you contribute to a traditional retirement plan is income that you avoid paying tax on until you take a withdrawal from that account in the future. So by deferring tax on your contributions, you're keeping more money in the account that can grow over time. And you get this fantastic benefit even if you don't itemize deductions on your tax return. You may be aware that there are fewer opportunities now to make itemized deductions, but it doesn't matter. Your retirement account is going to help you. Additionally, many employers match a percentage of your contributions to these company-sponsored retirement plans that we're talking about. Taking advantage of that benefit is just a, an amazing deal because you're getting free money to build a larger nest egg and cut your taxes at the same time. And even if you can't afford to max out a workplace retirement plan this year, just try to contribute enough to at least max out any employer matching funds that you can get. With other types of retirement accounts, such as an IRA or a SEP IRA, which is a plan for uh, self-employed people, there is not a year-end deadline. So with other types of accounts, you can make deductible contributions for a tax year up to the due date 
for your tax return, including any filing extensions. So in other words, if you're looking at an IRA or a SEP IRA, you've got until mid-April to make contributions for 2019. That's not the case for workplace retirement plans. For those that you get from an employer, you've only got until December 31st to make contributions for the current year. Okay, the second point on this checklist is boost your retirement savings rate. So while you're looking at your numbers and figuring out how much you've put in your retirement plan to date, this is a great time just to go ahead and increase your retirement rate contribution for next year. You can log on to your online retirement account to make any contribution changes, or you might be able to ask your benefits administrator or an account custodian to help you if you're not sure how to do it. In 2020, the contribution limits are going up. I've mentioned this in previous podcasts, but you're going to be able to contribute an additional $500. So starting in 2020, you can contribute $19,500 or $26,000 if you're over age 50. The catch-up contribution is also going up $500 for those over 50. So make a goal to boost your contribution rate by at least 1% each year until you hit the maximum limit. My goal for you, my wish for you, is that you will max out a retirement account every year going forward. If you can do that, you are going to be in such a good position for retirement. And you know what? If you haven't started saving for retirement yet, don't make the mistake of thinking that you're too young or that you'll just make up the difference later on because it's really hard to do. Young people can amass a fortune on far less than someone who starts investing later in life. Even if you can only save a small amount each month, let's say you can put away $250 a month and get a modest return over several decades you could easily have close to a million dollars to spend in retirement. So try to put in a little bit more each year. All right, our third point on the checklist is make the most of your health insurance. Your health insurance benefits and deductibles are tied to an annual schedule. So year end is the time when you can squeeze a little bit more value out of your health, your dental, and your vision policies. If you've already met your annual deductibles for the year, you can save money by scheduling needed appointments and paying for health care before the end of the year, before those deductibles reset on January 1st. Otherwise, starting next year, your deductible just, you know, it starts over again. So in other words, after you reach your annual deductible, you've got the opportunity for your insurance company to pay as much of your medical expenses as possible. If you delay appointments and you kind of kick them into the next year, you could end up paying more than you have to because you've got to meet that deductible. But, you know, on the other hand, you can't go overboard on appointments because plans typically have a maximum number of visits for services like checkups, dental cleanings, physical therapy, you know, prescription eyeglasses. So if you're not sure if you've maxed out your insurance benefits for the year, just ask your doctor's office to find out what's covered or call your insurance company. The fourth point on our checklist is drain your flexible spending account or FSA. If you have an FSA through your employer, it is also linked to the calendar year. Many employers offer these medical spending plans to help you save for qualified expenses, including childcare and a variety of medical expenses on a pre-tax basis. However, with an FSA, there is a spending deadline each year. So what that means is if you do not spend what is in the account, you're going to forfeit most of the excess. I mean, literally, you don't get to spend your own money. That is just not a good thing to do. This is known as the use it or lose it rule. And the cutoff does vary by company, but it's typically December 31st. If your employer adopts a grace period permitted by the IRS, you may have a little bit more time to spend funds in the account after the new year or to carry over a small amount, such as $500, into the next year. But if you do not have that grace period, be sure that you drain the fund before the end of the year. You might need to get creative to do that, but you could opt for preventative care or supplies such as dental checkups, vision exams, new prescription eyeglasses, contact lens solution, etc. 
So you don't lose one penny in the account. Now, note that if you have a health savings account or HSA, there are different rules. There is no spending deadline with an HSA. So don't worry about that. Funds in an HSA can stay there indefinitely and there's no penalty. Even if you change your insurers or you become uninsured or even are unemployed, there is no deadline to spend that money. So don't confuse these two medical savings accounts. On the fifth point of our checklist, it is prepay tax-deductible expenses. This is another really smart year-end tax strategy. You're paying or prepaying as many tax-deductible expenses as you can. Now, if you itemize rather than claiming the standard deduction, there are valuable deductions that can reduce your taxes for the current year. Here are a few to consider. One is charitable donations. These are deductible in the year you pay them. In other words, if you initiate an online payment or you make a credit card charge to a charity of your choice before December 31, it counts for the current year, even if you pay the credit card company next year. Another one is medical expenses. These are deductible up to certain limits. Now, you can deduct your unreimbursed healthcare expenses that exceed 10% of your adjusted gross income. So as I mentioned, it's smart to take care of as many of your family's medical needs as soon as possible before the end of the year. There is a wide variety of deductible healthcare expenses. They include medical, dental, vision, hearing, and even mental health providers, your medications, eyeglasses, contacts, medical equipment, and even travel for medical care all count. Set up those appointments and pay for your prescriptions and other deductible health care expenses as soon as you can. And home mortgage interest. This is deductible on your primary residence as well as on a second home. You can also deduct your property taxes and any points that you paid when you purchased the home if you've got a new home. If you're a homeowner, you could make your property tax payment ahead of time maybe or pay your January mortgage payment by December 31st. So you've got some additional interest to deduct this year. And there's student loan interest. Don't forget that this is deductible up to certain limits, even if you don't itemize deductions on your tax return. In general, you can deduct up to $2,500 of interest that you pay on education loans. If you paid more than $600 in interest to a single student loan lender during the year, you should get a form from them. It's Form 1098E. But even if you don't receive the form, you may still be entitled to the deduction. So check with your lender to learn more. All right, point number six, spend your credit card rewards. This is something we often forget to do, but if you use credit cards, they probably give you a variety of rewards, such as travel credits, points for purchases, and gift cards. Some of these benefits may expire at the end of the year. So instead of losing track, log on to your account and take advantage of them pronto. It may even help you with holiday gift giving. The seventh and final point is review your emergency documents and beneficiaries. If you had any significant life changes during the year, maybe a marriage, a divorce, or you had children or adopted children, be sure to update your emergency documents. These might include a will, a healthcare proxy, and power of attorney. And if you don't have these critical documents yet, Make an appointment with an attorney to set them up as soon as possible, maybe right after the new year. Without these critical documents, your wishes about many end-of-life issues may not be clear or they may not be carried out the way that you would want. Also, review who you've named as beneficiaries on important financial accounts. Many people don't realize that the beneficiaries you name on your workplace retirement accounts, any annuities you have and life insurance policies, they supersede your will. So in other words, let's say you've got an ex-spouse that you would not want to inherit your 401k after your death. If he or she is still on your 401k, they would get your money if you died. So you need to remove them immediately and make sure that your beneficiaries reflect your wishes. While this tip to get your documents in order may not save you money before the new year, it can definitely set your family and your heirs up for success 
if you die or you're no longer able to handle your personal affairs. As you spend time with friends and family during the holidays, it might be a really good time to discuss your estate plans and any changes that you should make. I know talking about these grim issues, this, you know, death, becoming incapacitated, naming guardians for minor children, they're not fun issues to talk about and they can be difficult, but addressing them sooner rather than later can give you incredible peace of mind. So I hope these tips will help you prepare a bit for the end of the year and get your finances in great shape. Thank you so much for downloading the show and being part of the Money Girl community. Keep listening, learning, and leveraging your resources to grow richer every single day. And I will say, if you're overwhelmed right now by debt, you're feeling scared, you're just confused about which debts to tackle and in what order, I have some fantastic resources that you need to check out. My most recent publication is called Debt-Free Blueprint, How to Get Out of Debt and Build a Financial Life You Love. It's available as a paperback, as an ebook, and as an audiobook. So if you're used to the sound of my voice, you can hear me narrate it. You can get that at audible.com or going to Amazon. If you have a money question or an idea for a future show topic, I would love to hear it. We have a terrific voicemail line. And if you don't want your name or your voice on the show, all you have to do is tell me and I won't use it. All you have to do is call in your question or comment to 302-364-0308 to leave your message. Money Girl is produced by the audio wizard Steve Rickyberg with editorial support from Karen Hertzberg. If you've been enjoying the podcast, please rate and review it on Apple Podcast. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes that are always available at quickanddirtytips.com. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week. Until then, here's to living a richer life.